In the beginning in Hawaiian mythology, Po was a vast empty land, a dark abyss where only one life form dwelled. This was the spirit of Kiawe. A single light shone through the darkness of Po, a flame holding the energy of creation. In this chaotic vortex, Kiawe evolved order. He opened his great calabash and flung the lid into the air. As it unfolded, it became a huge canopy of blue sky. From his calabash, Kiawe drew an orange disc, hanging it from the sky to become the sun. Next, Kiawe manifested himself as Nawahine, a female divinity considered his daughter. In addition, he became Kane, his own son, also known as Ele, or Ele Ele, who was the male generative force of creation. Nawahine and Kane mated spiritually to produce a royal family who became additional primary gods, worshipped by the Hawaiian people. In ancient chants and rituals, three sons, Ku, Lono, and Kanaloa, along with Kane, are the four major Hawaiian gods. Kanaloa is the least known of the gods and is lord of the ocean. In fact, the ocean itself is thought to be one of Kanaloa's bodies. It's appropriate that he has many sea creatures, such as the octopus and squid, as his Kinalau body forms. Other ocean-related Kinalau of Kanaloa are the Naya, dolphin, and the Kohola, whale. Kanaloa is known as Kane's traveling partner. These two gods are well known as Awa drinkers and for establishing sources of water. Some say Kanaloa would point out the source and Kane would bring forth the water. Maui was a shape-shifting demigod who went to extreme lengths to show his love for his mother, Hina. Hina was known for making fine cloth from tree bark, but she often couldn't finish her work because darkness fell too quickly. Approaching his four brothers for help, Maui said, let us now catch the sun in a noose so that we may compel him to move more slowly in order that mankind may have long days to labor in and procure substance for themselves. To which they responded, why? No man could approach it on account of its warmth and the fierceness of its heat. Confident in his abilities and surprised by his brother's lack of faith, he reminded them of how he had transformed into every bird of the forest and back into man, something they also considered impossible. With renewed hope and help from his brothers, he began to twist ropes to form the noose he would use to lasso the sun. After it was complete, Maui and his brothers walked eastward toward Haleakala Volcano, where the sun rises, stopping during the day to hide, moving only at night to keep the element of surprise. When the sun started rising, he ensnared it with the net and slowed down its passage through the sky. Maui started beating the sun with a magic club, and the sun begged him to stop eventually agreeing to travel more slowly for half the year to give people more daylight time for working, farming, and fishing. Pele was born in Tahiti, where her fiery temper and indiscretions with her sister's husband got her into trouble. Her father, the king banished her from Tahiti. Pele's older brother, Kamahoali'i, the king of sharks, provided Pele with a large canoe, which she and her brothers took and sailed away, eventually coming to Hawaii. 
She made landfall in Kauai, where she was attacked by her sister, Namako Okahai, and left for dead. According to legend, she was able to recover and escaped to Oahu, where she dug fire pits, including the crater today called Diamond Head. Upon discovering Pele had survived, Namaka Okahai traveled to Maui, and the two engaged in an epic battle near Hana, where Pele was torn apart by her sister and became a god. Finding a home on Mauna Kea, on Hawaii Island, she dug her final fire pit, the Hale Maumau Crater at the summit of Kilauea, where many believe she resides to this day. In Hawaiian mythology, the Minehune are a tiny people who lived in remote areas of the islands, spending their days building houses and other structures. These skilled craftspeople are said to have dwelt on Hawaii long before the arrival of Polynesian voyagers, building such things as the Alakoko fish pond on Kauai and the ancient stone shrines on Neger Island. It's believed that the Menehune still live deep in the forests, occasionally making their presence known by playing tricks on anyone who unknowingly ventures close to their settlements. The Menehune are credited with the construction of numerous heiaus, ancient temples, in various parts of the islands. The heiau of Mu'ukini near Hanuipu Koala is pointed out as an instance of their marvelous work the place selected for the site of the temple was on a grassy plain. The stones in the nearest neighborhood were for some reason not deemed suitable for the work, so those of Pololu Valley, distant some 12 miles, were selected. Tradition says the Menehunes were placed in a line covering the entire distance from Pololu to Hanuipu, whereby the stones were passed from hand to hand for the entire work. Work was begun at the quiet of night, and at cock crow in the morning it was finished. Thus in one night the heiau of Mu'ukini was built. The chief and his people were surprised on coming the next morning to resume their labors, finding the heiau completed. Hina mother of the demigod Maui, lived in a cave behind Rainbow Falls, along the Waluku River. She and her women made kepa, a cloth created by beating the bark from the mulberry bush. A mo'o, or giant lizard, named Kuna, lived along the Waluku River, and frequently tormented Hina by sending torrents of water, logs, and other debris over the falls. But Hina did not worry, because she was well protected in her cave by her son, Maui. One night, there was a huge storm, and rain filled the gorge. Kuna decided that he would take advantage of this storm, and placed a huge boulder to block the river just below Hina's cave, where she was asleep. And as the water rose, the cave started to flood. Now awake, Hina became alarmed and called to her son. Maui heard his mother's call faintly as in a dream. From the slopes of Haleakala on the island of Maui, he sprang into his canoe and paddled to Hilo. He saw no water flowing in the Waluko River and knew that it had been dammed. With his mighty club, Maui rushed up the river and struck the riverbank to make a waterway around the rock. Again, the water was able to flow toward the ocean. Kuna fled to a hiding place in the gorge above Rainbow Falls with Maui in pursuit. When Maui found the mo'o, he struck the rocks until the earth trembled and the mo'o rushed out looking for another place to hide. Kuna and Maui. Caught of Rainbow Falls. 
After being struck by Maui's club, the mo'o fell over the falls. The giant mo'o still lies where he fell, a great rock in the Waluku River. Today, Kuna is beaten by stones and logs and flooded by water, just as he tried to beat and drown Hina.